Remember when you were young and everything in life seemed so much more fun and the possibilities seemed endless? Is that still the same for you or has life become a serious business? Wherever you are, you can change it. What if more magic, fun, and possibilities were available to you right here, right now? Join Laura and Alan in the playground of possibility as they play, laugh, and explore new ways you can use to make your life more fun and to create more of what you desire. Hello and welcome to the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Laura Borland, and my very, very lovely playmate, Alan Jones. Hello, Alan. How are you today? <laughs> Hello. I'm very well, thank you. And uh, awesome. lovely playmate. I'm enjoying that. That's, that's a good one. So you're my gorgeous co-host and I'm your lovely playmate. How, How does it get better than that? <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about who won't you play with, and I'm really excited to see what we can create with that. But before we dive into that, let me tell you a little bit about us. I'm a qualified coach and certified inner metrics consultant, and I love playing with individuals and businesses to blow up their limitations to create greater possibilities. I work with people across the world in person and on Skype. To find out more about me and the work I do, check out my website at www.lauraborland.com that's B-O-R-L-A-N-D and Alan is a certified coach, access bars facilitator, radio show host really, and creator of awesomeness he <laughs> facilitates <laughs> sessions with people to help them change their life and create more of everything they would like to have in their life you can have a session with Alan in person over the phone and on Skype so geographical location is not a limitation that's a tongue twister Alan also facilitates classes and hosts life-changing events too and you can check out his website at alan-jones.com for more information so alan tell us about today oh are you still there hello oh i don't know what's happened but um Oh, okay. So apparently you can hear me, but I can't hear you. So let me, let me. <laughs> how does it get any better than that? Um, how? Where are we? So sorry, that completely threw me because I couldn't hear noises in the background. So we're talking today about uh, who won't you play with? So our write-up for today was: so watching kids playing is fascinating, and actually I do find that quite fascinating, just because how easy they make it. They just show up, they play with no names, no ceremony, just curiosity and a willingness to play. So we were all kids once. What happened? <laughs> By the time we were adults, for many of us, the story totally changed. We like this person, we don't like that person, we shouldn't play with this person, and so on. So who would you never work with? Where do you limit and block yourself because you've decided that what you will and won't do doesn't fit? And, and do different versions of these people just keep showing up in your life anyway? So you're kind of stuck with them, whether you like it or not. So what if you could change this with ease? And there we go. So, okay. Um, so here we go. <laughs> and ah, hello, you know, back. I don't know hello. where I went. <laughs> <laughs> multitasking. Oh, my God. Trying to read and speak. How much fun does it get better than that? So, uh, yeah, not freaking at all. Just I'm, talking I'm like I normally do. We can hear you. Can you hear Where did I go? I don't know, but you're here now and you're here to play. So I've um, I've let people know what we're talking about today, which is who won't you play with? And so are you trying to send us a message that you won't play with us today? Uh, I have no idea. I, I kept talking and I was like, where's everybody gone? And then I thought, oh, maybe it's me that's gone. <laughs> yeah. But you're back now. Anyway, so, Laura, who won't you play with? Who won't I play with? You know, it's really mm. interesting. When I was thinking about this um, for the show, I was thinking that um, I really don't like playing with people who are all about telling me like what's wrong and what I should do and um, how to how to fix me and boss me about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so what's that about? Don't <laughs> Why don't you me. like being bossed about? Is that because <laughs> you like being bossy? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess because it's like actually who who amongst us really likes being kind of like told what we what we have to do and when we're playing with people and we get to kind of like um, create together it's so mm. much fun rather than feeling like we have to dance to the, the sound of someone else's someone else's drum I guess 
What about you? Yeah, I, I, in some ways it's kind of quite similar. I, for me, I don't like playing with what I would um, describe as serious people. You know, people who um, just, in, from my perspective, my point of view, don't seem to have a sense of humour. <laughs> And I know that's a very sweeping judgment to make because I have a very bizarre sense of humour. That, and I'll laugh at most things, just not everything I know. And um, and so for me, it's like the, the people I struggle with most are what I would call serious people. People who tell me that you know you're you're not taking this seriously. And that really used to put my back up. It's just because I'm laughing and I'm mucking around. It doesn't mean to say that I'm not. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? What do they mean by making it serious? What they're, I guess yeah. what they're saying is you're not making it meaningful and significant. So, you know, that was that wow. for me. It was like, you're not making this meaningful and significant. And my answer is, well, no, I'm not. But it doesn't mean I'm not taking it seriously. And, you know, that's really interesting because it's almost like we can't, have CD, we can't be serious and have fun. So, actually, what if we can do really kind of... Um, what does serious mean? What does serious mean? Um, yes, yeah, what does serious mean? Uh, up. For me, it means really grown up. And it means somber. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> and do you ever have like times where it's like you go into a situation and everybody's um, really serious and you're like thinking, I just want to be like a jack-in-the-box, which actually just makes me want to bounce out and like play even more? <laughs> And, you know, it's interesting you should talk about it just makes you want to play more. Christine's just asked a question saying, you know, what does play mean? Um, and so for yeah, me, that's so very much about being in the flow with the energy. And actually, yeah. being in the flow with the energy, it's not about the... For me, it's not about the, the content. It's about it's much more about the attitude. Um, so, yeah, whereas it's like series is heavy and stilted. And um, Domingo's saying, and most of the people are still doing it, what will it take to be able to receive this with total ease? I know. What would it take to be able to receive this with total ease? It's about, I, I think part of this is also about being an allowance of people, isn't it? You know, you being an allowance of different styles and also being an allowance of our own. So when did we stop being an allowance of ourselves? Again, Domingo made a point earlier on about, um, you know, for him, he stopped being you know with the re he stops being him and playing with people as people started to judge and criticize him so my question back to that would be actually domingo um were they criticizing and judging you or were they criticizing and judging themselves that you picked up and misidentified as you so that's just something that you know i'd throw back out there because you know how aware you know it, a lot of this is to do with awareness and allowance isn't it you know we stop playing with people because become we become aware of all of these limitations that go on around us and what's expected yeah. and what's allowed and what's acceptable behavior and yeah, you know I've, and when we so go no and i was just going to say and actually it's like when we do that it's like um as kids we have no like there's a are we really aware that we're picking up other people's stuff as kids because it's like actually it's like we're not really taught that so again it's like we take it into ourselves and we're like oh i shouldn't do that that's not okay yeah yeah, so, yeah. they're yeah. not yeah it's not acceptable behavior and and because we're not taught from an early age uh, you know uh, as Domingo was saying about people judging us we're not taught that what we're aware of isn't always ours we mm. then start to shut off our awareness such that you know we, you know we, we we can't be an allowance of it because we don't realize it's not even ours absolutely and you know there's something for me as well around kind of um that I know for me that I sometimes look at people and I'm like yeah they don't look like so much fun to play with or they're a bit weird or there's <laughs> this or they're that. And so rather than kind of like jumping in and going, hey, what can I create here? I'm just kind of like, let me just like, let me just decide what this is before I, before I choose whether I'm going to play or not. Absolutely. And yeah, it can be, it's funny how people can perceive you in different ways as well, isn't it? Because I think that's the thing. We, we make conclusions or snap judgments about people sometimes when we look at it, go well, you know they don't look like they're going to be much fun to play with and or I don't think <laughs> that I'm good enough to play with them you, you know, know it's and funny and you go mm. no no go well I was just going to say it's funny it's like I'm um, so I remember going through this phase where you know it's like going through this like looking for 
the answer. <laughs> and um, and I used to go to all these different things, and I, you know, around kind of like exploring different aspects of kind of like life. And I used to think, why are the people all so weird here? Why can't any of them be normal? They look weird. They wear weird clothes. It's like they talk weird. And it just make it used to make me laugh because the more I, the more I had that point of view, the more that I seemed to notice them. <laughs> It is, isn't it? It is. The more you pay attention to a specific thing, the more you seem to uh, attract more of it. So, you know, it's like if I keep noticing that people around me are not fun to play with, you know, then I'm going to, who am I going to attract? People that are not fun to play with. And then that, it comes back to what Christine was saying around, what does, what does play with actually mean? And I know that... Um, it's really funny talking about this whole work and uh, you know kind of whole who will you not play with thing. I mean, there's someone that I know that runs um, what called classes and 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 stuff, and she calls them play shops. And there's something about it that really really pisses me off. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, I just don't I just don't like it because like what's wrong with workshop? For me, it's like workshop doesn't have you know the whole connotation of um, work for me. It's just it's it's a place where I can just, I just don't have any point of view about it, but play shop, I have all sorts of stuff around, oh my god, that's going to be um, all kind of airy-fairy and touchy-feely and da 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 you know, and, and I know that's complete conclusion of, on my part, but it's just for me that puts them off, so how many things do we do that actually put people off because they have conclusions about what that means for them? Oh, I'm sure none. <laughs> And you know it's really funny, um, it, and I just love this. It's like how you know it's like, you know, we're all so different because when you said, um, you know, play shop as opposed to workshop, I love play shop. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And so you know, it's just again, it's like that all the kind of like the judgments that we have. Um, you know, it's like when even when we see words, so it's like even when we see a word, we're making a, a a conclusion or a judgment about the person and the kind of person we think they're going to be. Yeah. Um, by by the words they're choosing. Yeah, I mean, look, business consultant, business analyst, IT programmer, you know, I, coming, from, coming from a human resources background, you know, there were stereotypes that that you would get within an organization um, that you would kind of think, OK, well, you know, from my background, I'm probably not going to interact well with those people, which, again, is all conclusion and all, you know, stereotypes that we, we get drawn into. And everywhere that um, we actually uh, conclude what people are, just because mm. they have a particular label, maybe maybe we should think about giving that up. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. So everything that exactly is, just release it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm. So and what else would be possible if we operated beyond that? Mm. Sorry, go. Yeah, cause, no, well then, because you'd actually get to see kind of like, it's almost that thing where we decide and um, conclude that it's like somebody is something, then actually it leaves no space for them to be able to to be anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. when you're, yeah, we're limiting them, we're keeping them in that definition, that potentially they're also keeping themselves in, that society has them in, and we're alluding with that. So what would it take just to be um, in total allowance? Of, of how people do say what exactly what exactly what you're saying earlier on who can I play with here what's possible here and just very quickly before we go to break because we've got about a minute before we go to break Domingo is saying you know what would it take to receive judgments and not feel bad well remember that well where do I go you know where, what would you say to that uh, Laura you know what how would you how would you reply I think it's just it's a choice in the moment so I know for me it's like whenever I decide that I'm going to be something you know for any length of time it's like I'll completely like fall apart but it's like mm -hmm. it's, if I can choose it and so in this 10 seconds mm -hmm. it's like you know what would it take to just receive that and just so mm -hmm. actually for me it's like when it's about making it small it feels so much easier to choose in the moment than to choose in the next like 40,000 moments that might come up um, and it is that thing where it's just their interesting point of view and people judge us all the time um, you know, and it's like, it's for me, it's just become practice, but it still bites me sometimes. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people do, don't they? They they judge themselves, which we pick up on it, and they chuck judgments at us. And it's like, and what if you didn't make yourself bad or wrong for feeling 
crappy about the judgment you're receiving. So what if part of the people's judgments just give you uh, an awareness of how they're choosing to operate? Oh, right, Absolutely. you're operating from judgment. Do you know what? That's okay. Yeah. Anyway, we can pick that up, um, I reckon, after the break. What do you say? Magic, that sounds good to me. Let's go to play. Okay. Okay, so if we go to break now, that would be marvellous. <laughs> were you told as a child to grow up at your age and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you're an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choices and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 4433-0001-0625, or Skype us at atizen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, you're listening to Alan and Laura on the Playground of Possibilities, and we are talking today about who won't you play with and that could be anyone or anything. And if you'd like to join us in the chat room, you can go to a to zen.fm and click on the chat on the blue bar, or you can call in with a question, which would be awesome too. And uh, if you need that, we've just given you the information, but let me give it to you again anyway while I'm here. Uh, you can call in with questions in the US on 815-880-8255, in Canada on 613-800, 8736 and in the UK you can call us on double three treble zero one oh six two five and you can also Skype in on a to zen dot fm. So how does it get any better than that? Mm -hmm. So Oh here we go. Hang on, I'm my multitasking again. I've got you know how do people do that on television, you know, when they're you know they're playing mm -hmm. on television, they're doing that presenting <laughs> They're doing that presenting, and then they're <laughs> listening to people in their ears, and they're talking at the same time. Like, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> what I'm not good enough, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no self-judgment going on there. No, 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 no. So... <laughs> it's a muscle Thank when you. you're doing being... <laughs> What would it take for like, it to like, develop speedy fast? <laughs> absolutely, and I certainly like to play with my muscles, Christine, as we were discussing earlier on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, ha -ha. so just picking up on something that Domingo was talking about, you know, in terms of kind of uh, interacting with other people and you know, playing with them, whatever else it is that we're doing with them, um, what he's saying is that he's aware sometimes his judgments don't create reaction in him and sometimes they push buttons. And my response to that would be when someone has a judgment that I pick up on that they're either chucking at me or chucking around and it is causing um, <laughs> it is causing me to have 
a kind of a reaction to it. My kind of answer is, you know what? Thank you so much for being that judgment, because it, it's showing me where I've got resistance and reaction to it. And so, where I am resisting and reacting, I would ask a question to, you know, to somebody's judgments. I would ask, if I weren't resisting and reacting to this, what contribution could I gift and receive? Wow! And, the and I love. You so different. It is, isn't it? It's like, so whenever I notice someone judging, including me, you know, when I judge myself, it's like, okay, so if I didn't, if I didn't judge myself for not being able to, <laughs> to read and speak at the same time, what would I choose? So if I weren't in resistance and reaction, what can I give to receive? What would I choose? And you can just, you know, I just feel myself take a breath when that happens because I just feel things shifting and changing. Do you know, that's... um when you were talking there it made me think how often do we not play with ourselves mm-hmm. um, because you know just when you were given that example of um, like you know you've not been able to like read and write and talk and all the things you were saying at the same time um, it's like and, and here am I trying to do it now because it's like there's still stuff like popping up in the, in the chat room. <laughs> it's so distracting <laughs> what if it um, isn't what if it isn't mm-hmm. Yeah, what if it is, as what as if it's the, Yeah. Well as soon as we go into the sea, it's like isn't that amazing how instantaneously we create it? Yes. Yeah, rather Absolutely. than just being in the question. And I think that's the thing, it's like, you know, so what if we could just notice what we notice and then choose again? And it's almost like so many times and, and I don't know about you know, you Alan, but it's like there's sometimes it's like certain people I'll get to a space where I'm like, I don't want to play with them. And I just accept that, and I don't go back and question again. Um, yeah. And so then that becomes kind of like how, and, and I do find it really difficult, interesting point of view, to see that person in a different way because perhaps I'm not willing to look at kind of like what's going on there for me. Absolutely, I think what you've just done there as well is is uh, by using, uh, you know, the interesting point of view. For those who don't know, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. It's one of the tools from Access Consciousness, and you can find out more about that from www.accessconsciousness.com. You can find out more about Access Consciousness there. One of the tools there is, is interesting point of view, I have this point of view. So what if everything in your life was just an interesting point of view, and you had no resistance and reaction to anything? Mm -hmm. So when you're getting into that space of, oh my God, you know, they look so... Okay, so here we go with this one. They look so boring, they don't look like they're going to be fun. Rather than immediately continue, yeah, exactly. Are you Can reading you my that? mind? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> and that's why you chose to do the radio show with me because I'm so boring. And um, yeah, what if, <laughs> what, what if, uh, yeah, Ms. Borland? And so, oh. what if? Uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd drop that one in just. I know, just you were there. just checking out the charge. <laughs> yeah, I was. And uh, so, it, when you look at that, it's like. So when you notice yourself resisting and reacting, I don't want to play with those people. You know, you can use something as simple as, okay, that's an interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And you can keep repeating it until you, you kind of get some kind of lightness to it, which is, for me, it works quite quickly on something. Some things I'll repeat it maybe two or three times, sometimes I'll <laughs> 40 or 50 times later. <laughs> and if it's still not working, then I'm going, okay, so then I move on to another tool, which is, what is this? Yeah. What can I do with it? Can I change it? If so, how do I change it? Yeah. And, and you know, it is it. Sorry, go. No, I was just going to say that the the thing about the interim point of view, I have this point of view. For me, I talk to people and I say, you know, it's almost like when you're in a st- if you're in a stage on a play, and it's like, and you just have, it's like you've kind of forgotten that you're in a play because you're so involved in it. And what for me, mm-hmm. the interesting point of view, I have this point of view tool does is it, it kind of creates some space between what's going on because actually there's a gazillion points of view and we just buy one and make it real, which is really quite insane. <laughs> it totally is, absolutely. And that links incredibly well, again, with, uh, with another question from Domingo. He says, what have I made so vital about resisting and reacting to people's judgments? And it, it's like... How do we use that? So when you when you make something vital, it means that you kind of you're keeping it in your life. So what have we made so vital about, you know, concluding who we can play with that, you know, limits 
us playing with people outside of what we consider to be our norm, our group, or our, what we're socially comfortable with. Because what if you can play with people who are just so very, very different to you? Absolutely. In so, terms of, it, it, well, I was going to say, it reminds me of being in school, and it's almost mm. like, you know, when you're when you're quite wee, you play with anybody, and then it's like, you know, once you're in kind of like, I don't know, year five or six, which is like, what, 10 or 11? Mm-hmm. age 10 or 11, it's like, I just remember, it's like, you know, there was this one ghetto that actually seemed like the whole year kind of like ganged up on, and I remember thinking about it recently and going, wow, we were so cruel, um, mm. and I didn't know her, and like, I'm like, wow, none of that was mine, but actually, sometimes it's like, you know, not only is it how we're judged, it's how we judge others, and actually, sometimes the judgment is because we want to belong um, because we don't want to be left in the playground not playing with anyone. Absolutely. It is that not being excluded. And, you know, you're, yeah, that reminds me of a of a, a really, what was at the time, horrendous thing that I did to somebody on a school bus. You know, and I, you know, it was, at the time, it was kind of quite funny just to be, to, to Mickey take this girl. And mm-hmm. just the whole energy around me at the time was, I, you know, and this is, you know, I'm not saying that I'm <laughs> unashamed of this. It's just like it's quite shocking, really. As I sit here and think about the, my behaviour, was I, I had to make her break down. I had to absolutely, utterly upset her on that. Otherwise, I have not succeeded. Succeeded, and everybody else was kind of laughing while I was doing it. it was, you know, I was the, you know, the the really kind of fun one. And then, of course, you know, when she'd cry, I was utterly ashamed of myself for my behaviour. Mm-hmm. And, of course. At the time, you know, everyone thought I was marvellous, but then nobody wanted to talk to me after that. Why? Because they were terrified that I was going to do the same to them. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and absolute vulnerability about that. And, you know, if I, I don't think that the person would ever be listening, but if ever she does, then, you know, all I can do is absolutely apologise for that. Because it was, from OK, you know, that's not going to judgment of myself for it. It happened and I got caught up in it. But it is amazing how trying to be included actually created me being excluded yeah and that's actually that's really interesting because I remember being in school and there was a guy who just would lie all the time because he but and now I can see that he was just desperate to be included um but mm-hmm. actually his lies became more outrageous and the more outrageous he became and now I can see that was his desperation to be included the more yeah. everybody just made fun of them fun of them mm-hmm. And it's amazing how quickly we go from that space of like, you know, again, it's like, you know, my old nephew. It's like I adore kind of like when you when you play with him because he's just kind of like, well, like, come on. And, you know, it's like, and there's, it's each moment to moment, whereas it's like, you know, give it another five years. And it's like, and, and we've started getting into this thing around kind of like that sense of belonging and not wanting to be excluded and monitoring our behavior and not being true to who we are, but actually kind of like some of our behaviour is coming from kind of like what we think others want us to be. Absolutely. You know, it it is about what's what's considered to be acceptable and, and you know, if you belong to this group therefore you should be behaving in this way. And these groups of people don't kind of uh don't mix together. You know, I was also as a child <laughs> one of the geeky ones who played with computers. And um and that's I you know what I totally you being geeky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love playing with computers, and that's why I love the program Big Bang. You know, Big Bang Theory. For me, it okay. just completely turns. You know, there for me, it just completely opens out that whole. Yes, they're geeky, but they're also a lot of fun to be around. And uh-huh. looking at the character of Penny, who totally isn't a geek, and how she fits into that group. So uh, we've got about one. That. Haven't you watched it? Oh, it no. it's worth. I watched. <laughs> well. <laughs> We've got about one minute to break, so we may have to pick this up after the break. But yeah, Penny is is just this total not geek at all who goes out with um, you know uh, another geek who's uh, Leonard, I think his name is, and you know so there's it's it's a great show and it's a lot of fun and it just goes to show that when you're willing to step out of stereotypes and boundaries, you can you can play with anyone if you're willing to. Yeah. Uh, it's just how different are you willing to be. And you know that's a really nice note in which to end because I'm thinking when we come back it might be nice to just explore and play a bit with kind of like the idea of like what do we how do we limit ourselves by choosing not to play with people that we decide yes. we don't want to play with yeah mm-hmm. so yeah, we look forward to having you back after the break and in the meantime enjoy the ads. <laughs> 
Thanks, guys. Were you told as a child to grow up at your age and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you're an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choices and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 4433-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hi, and welcome back. You're here with Laura and Alan, and today we are discussing who won't you play with. And just before the break, Alan is telling me about the Big Bang Theory, but I think I'm going to try and quickly skip over that, and I am going to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go straight into it. I'm just, so Alan, for you, it's like, think of, you know, you said about, you know, not wanting to play with people who are serious. Mm. And just, I'm curious, it's like, in what way do you think that limits your world? Oh God, it limits totally, because what if somebody's fun, but they think that they're serious? It's like, how do people view themselves and how... Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do people perceive themselves and how do other people perceive them and all of that kind of stuff. It's like, so I, <laughs> and also vice versa, I know some people who think for me that they are kind of really, really fun and really, really out there. And for me, they're just incredibly controlled and not very expressive. So that's, I think, for me, the serious kind. It's like not wanting to play with serious people is, um, I was trying to think of a tele person on television who I just don't find funny at all. Difficult, but um, yeah. So for me, it is about people who, I guess, aren't very expressive. Uh, don't get don't get enthusiastic about my ideas. <laughs> and uh, you know, because yeah, you know, I want people to say to me, you know, you're marvelous, you're wonderful. Get out there and do it. And if they don't kind of jump up and down immediately, go, that's fantastic. Then uh, fuck them. I'll just walk away. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> well, you know, I guess it does limit the amount of people that I can, uh, <laughs> you know, the amount of people that I can can work with or facilitate or be a contribution to. And and it's funny that, that I've said that because actually I can rein myself in because I know that sometimes you know I am very expressive and it, things do show on my face and you know I do have a tendency not to shut up and talk at six thousand miles an hour. But there are some people where that's just too much for them and so I will ask the question now what's what's required here and do you know that's mm. funny it makes me um, think of um, I sit on a rather serious committee and right. um, yeah it's true I do and um, 
And there was a time where I was, I was struggling with it because I made a commitment to be on this committee and it just wasn't working for me. And I would almost be like the Tasmanian devil when I showed up at the meetings. And of course, it's like nobody was thanking me for that. And actually mm-hmm. just using some of the access questions, I have been able to create something completely different. So, you know, um, what is required of me here? What could be the greatest contribution? What would be fun for me that that they mm-hmm. can receive? And it's actually really interesting how um, I'm still perceived as a troublemaker, but that's no bad thing because it's a very kind of like um, just in terms of the environment. But actually it's been regarded with the troublemaker with affection now. Yeah. Um, and there was no affection there. So I guess it's that thing where we get to decide who we want to play with and who we don't. And it's like, and actually when, but we can choose, we can choose again. We can, we can actually find different ways of playing with people that might not necessarily be the most fun. You can see for me, the fun thing as well is like coming out. Um, but, but we can change it. And actually that's been really empowering for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It does come down to, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, using kind of a lot of the access tools and, and other, you know, and other stuff as well in terms of, so, you know, what am I defining as fun and what contribution can I gift and receive here? What yeah. contribution can I gift and receive in this space? And, and what is fun about this that I'm not acknowledging? Yeah, so <laughs> like, let's destroy and uncreate mm. all our definitions of fun because actually what if, um, you know, uh, fun is actually a limitation. Well, again, that comes back to that question that that uh, Christine was asking right at the very beginning of the show. You know, what what is fun? And so, yeah, absolutely. So, are we willing to let that go? Mm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. interesting point of view. We have this point of view about what fun is. <laughs> interesting point of view. We have this point of view about what fun is. And interesting point of view. We have point of view about what fun isn't. What yeah, isn't fun? Mm. Actually, you know, so for I'm just thinking in a you know broader kind of like spectrum. So like I work with people in businesses, and often people are doing things that aren't necessarily fun. But actually, it's like so. What is fun for me is when I'm getting to use my talents, when I'm getting to do stuff that I enjoy. So you mm-hmm. know, um, that whole ca- we have the capacity to be able to adapt. But it's like if I'm genuinely enjoying sort of like the the, the bigger thing that's being created. Um, it's almost like when when I'm doing when I'm doing something that doesn't make my heart sing, um, then actually that's tough for me. Absolutely, I, and I think that's that's one of the key things. Is like what it is about, you know, coming back to not having such as a defined definition of what fun is, and you know, and what con- what contribution he is here that, as you said, makes my heart sing. What contribution can I be here that really? that really flows with what I love doing, what I'm currently good at, because we can always be good at anything if we, if we, if we choose to be, and if it, if it feels light and fun for us. Um, and I think doing what, because they do say to you in life, you know, you, you, you know, work and play are not the same things. Or again, in recruitment, I would see quite often, we work hard, we play hard. Oh, wow, yeah, totally. And they're just so separate. I think, well, do they really need to be separate? Yes, there's no. a time when you're not sitting there making jokes, and, and that's the thing. It's like, for some people, I know I can be quite flippant and I can make jokes sometimes that perhaps, you know, are not the greatest contribution or <laughs> they're misplaced, you know, and, I think, and that's usually so where people look at me and go, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I totally am. But that's also me misreading, me misreading the situation, you know, I'm thinking, I think, rather than asking a question before blurting my big mouth out and going, ah, this would be really funny, and then everyone just sitting there looking at going, just shut up. <laughs> and I've never, you can I've t- never done that. No, no, me, no, me either. No, it's just a dream. It's just a, it's just a, a figment of my imagination. <laughs> So, yeah, it is about, you know, what is, it, not appropriate, but what's required. I don't like, you know, for me, appropriate is is, uh, is full of, of judgment. Yeah, absolutely. So it's what's required, what will create the most. If I say this, will it be a contribution to this group? If I behave this way? And it is just about being aware and asking a question before we open our mouths and, and act. And it's not about thinking before you open your mouth, because, you know, for, for me, that that just limits it in its in and of itself. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's and when we find ourselves 
you know, creating a definition of, you know, what fun in was, what, what fun is, what fun isn't, what work is, what work isn't. It's like, again, one of the access tools I really like for this kind of thing is, well, who does that belong to? Because you're not born with a whole load of definitions. <laughs> These are things no. that you learn as you go, you know, as you start going through life. Or well, this is what this means, and this is what this means, and this is what this means. And so we are raised on all of these different definitions about what, you know, what is acceptable, what you, what your behaviour is acceptable. Children should be seen and not heard, etc. And you know that's funny you're saying that because one thing for me, I'm like, so fun is a big one for me, and um, for other people it's intelligence other people it's efficiency um you know so whatever it is i wonder i'm actually i'm like sitting here wondering wow so what could i create beyond fun in terms of like creating with people and you know just that thing coming back to it's like we have made fun actually it's a limitation and um, because if I'm, if I'm not having fun i decide i'm not bored um, i'm bored and i don't want to play yeah i think that's the thing fun for me means um it, it, you know, where can we create beyond what we've defined fun as being? Because fun for me is about uh, um, new explorations, doing something different, doing something that kind of makes my stomach go, uh, you know, even though it's it's like going on a roller coaster for the first time. That's fun for me. I mean, after I've done so it two it or three when times. I just, was <laughs> <laughs> it fun when I just off the line, off for a bit? Was that fun? Um, <laughs> once I realised what happened, I, you know, and I, you know, I got my lovely kind of our fabulous co uh, producer um sent a message going to me, keep talking everyone can hear you like okay so i'll just carry on and do what i'm good at which is having fun and talking so um you think it's like um, and and that actually was that fun yeah it was funny i'm not you know i'm not judging me i'm not judging you and i just think it's really quite you know for that me for me was funny but i kind of has that, is that something I've learned or is it something that I've, you know, a whole load of stuff that I've let go of that now mean that I'm more comfortable with it? <laughs> That's not my voice. And actually, you know, what, <laughs> what, if we're, um, what if we're far more potent than we're actually kind of like aware that we are? Because it's like, you know, um, it's it's almost like when you think about something. Actually, so let me really quickly tell you. So it's like um, I managed to create a TED Talk. I got to speak at a TEDx event at the weekend, which was extremely exciting for me. And... It was a lot of fun when I got asked three weeks ago, and um, but actually somewhere in the middle of it, like the fun completely stopped um, because it was intense and I was trying to get it right and and I had to just really destroy and uncreate a whole bunch of stuff around kind of like all my points of view, like TED Talk and oh, what were these people going to think of me? And you know, it's like when I was there um, on Saturday, and once I kind of found my stride um, on the on the stage. I was totally out of my comfort zone and I was having so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, but it's almost like that thing where, you know, it's like, because I've committed to doing it. So although I did want to tell them on Thursday that I'd changed my mind and would they mind if I didn't come? Um, <laughs> but actually it's like, it's just that thing where, so fun doesn't necessarily always mean easy. Um, yeah. yeah, because it's like actually, um, to, to get up and stand and to know that, you know, I was talking to an audience of which the, the talk in the morning had been very, very different um, and I kept thinking, oh, I don't, weird, I'm seeing something very different from that person, but actually to stand up and talk was so much fun, although it was really kind of like oof, wow, it's like look at all these people and they're all going to judge me. Absolutely. And I, yeah, to then just be like how much fun can I have with that? And it is that that coming down to how much judgment are you willing to receive? Because yeah. when you um, when you drop all of those barriers and are willing to be vulnerable and just stand there and go, do you know what? I am totally comfortable if I completely fuck this up. Because that's the thing is, if you're not willing to to do that, and you're not willing just to have receive all that judgment of, oh my god, that really awful, or she was a, and or the positive judgments of, that was a great talk. Absolutely. She did really well. She's really inspiring me. Because let's remember that judgment is not just kind of crappy stuff. It's also awesome stuff. And, uh, you know, perhaps we can talk about that more after the break. We're just about to go for another break. So, um, yeah, we can pick up on, on kind of receiving judgment. You know, is it fun to receive judgment? There's something that Gary said once at the um, Gary Douglas, yeah, Douglas at, a, at a, a class I went to. And also something you said about fun isn't always easy. 
and you know we can pick up on that and a couple of other things um, after the break. So um, I will leave now with the adverts and uh, catch up with you shortly. Okay, or we will even. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> Were you told as a child to grow up at your age and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you're an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choices and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 4433-0001-0625, or Skype us at atizen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. And uh, this is Alan and Laura on uh, Playground of Possibilities, still talking about who won't you play with. And uh, before we went away, we were for, into the break, we were talking about um, receiving judgment and how much fun that is isn't <laughs> for so many people <laughs> and uh and you know and that fun isn't always easy so let me so gary said something around uh, in the in the level two and three acts of consciousness classes in um in london in march this year he was <laughs> gary was saying something about when you drop all your barriers and receive judgments it actually kind of um, tickles your nipples. I don't know if you uh, remember that, <laughs> Laura, but it's like, what if that's true? What if judgment can tickle your nipples? And if that was the oh, case and you like that. having your nipples tickled, absolutely. <laughs> How much judgment are you willing to receive? So, you like getting yeah, your just... nipples tickled? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, let's not go there. Um, okay. <laughs> moving swiftly on, <laughs> before we go into a completely different subject altogether. <laughs> completely. Um, so, so, so can I just go. say one thing because I wanted to say so actually you know when I noticed myself on Saturday thinking about oh wow it's like what are people going to think about what I say and about how I look and actually something that really helped me was to go back to what contribution can I be here and what if some what if I am actually an invitation to a greater possibility what if one person walks out of here and has thought wow it's like you know I do think something different about their universe because actually when we talk about changing the world we're not always going to know how we've changed the world, and we don't need to. Absolutely right, and I think a lot of the time we won't know that no. we've changed the world because there's something that we, you know, even on this show, you know, one of the reasons why I know I got together, one of the reasons uh, having talked to you about it, you know, we got together to do this show with the pure purpose of of having, you know, having a laugh, but also, but of being able to. To help people change their lives, to ch create change in the world, so that people are more at ease with themselves and their choices, and that we end up creating more for everyone. And 
um, so there is so if just one person walks away from this show today with a different possibility then do you know what then absolutely and if nobody walks away necessarily succeeding they may then repeat <laughs> something that we've said to somebody else so, so let me ask you Alan so for you it's like has this conversation changed anything for you actually yeah it has because it's just come back to it's it's made me more aware of how I how I'm limiting what I'm actually what contribution I can be by deciding what is fun and what isn't fun rather than asking a question about what what you know what would be fun and also be a contribution and what else is possible that I haven't considered that could be fun that I've already decided isn't fun so yeah. what have I decided isn't fun that could be fun that if I'm willing to know that it is fun would create more for everyone so yeah it has it's it's made me just open up a bit more about what else is possible and who else might like to come to to be with you know kind of to come and receive and gift a contribution with me or from me mm -hmm. so, and talking uh, about receiving a contribution with and from you it's like you've got some awesome things going on I have, yes. Um, talking of uh, uh, having fun and or not having fun and life-changing events, um, I have some. Uh, I'm hosting a number of facilitators in London in November. And How did they get so lucky? <laughs> uh, that's sending me into a bit of a beyond because, of course, all I am is just the host and no <laughs> just going on there. So um, it's a so shame <laughs> I see all that. Absolutely, willing to let <laughs> okay. that go. Definitely okay. willing to let that go. So we, I've got uh, Glenys Hughes is coming on the 11th of November to do a class called Outcreate Your Awesomeness, and she did a class okay. with, uh, in in September. Ah, it was just a lot of fun in September when she did a two-day class. So she's doing a, an evening class there on the 11th of November, and we've got the amazing and wonderful Heather Nichols coming in uh, November as well. Mm-hmm. Is that the 17th to the 17th or the 17th to the 21st? It is the 13th to the 17th that Heather's coming for the five-day event, which is Access Bars Foundation Level 1, which is five awesome. days to change your life. And mm -hmm. then Margaret Braunack is coming to Having Your Cake and Eating It too. Uh, that's on the, uh, when is that? That's in, uh, I think that's the 21st of November. For, that's a two-and-a-half-day class. So did you know you can have your cake and eat it too? I'll have that. And she's also doing, yeah, absolutely. I'll have cake and eat it, definitely, most definitely. And then she's also doing the Access Consciousness three day body class. So you can get details of all of those classes that I'm hosting, these amazing facilitators, at my website, which is uh, Alan, which is A L U N dash Jones dot com. And on there, you'll see there's a, a link for something called Life Changing Events, and you can find them all on there. So we're going to get. Uh, I think we're coming <laughs> right near wait, to the wait, end. Wait, so I, just, I just wanted to pick up on uh, Keisha. Has, Keisha? Keisha? Am I saying that right? I'm so sorry. I'm saying your name wrong. That's terrible. Um, but I like your comment in the chat room. Kind of sounding like a bit of a master creator magic going on there, Alan Jones. But then you're just <laughs> the host, right? I am just the host. <laughs> <laughs> so, absolutely. So, yeah. That, so, a lot of stuff, a lot of amazing stuff going on. And uh, you can you know, contact me via my website or you can contact Laura via her website if you want to know any more details. And Laura is lauraborland.com. And, you know, we'll be happy to kind of help you with any of the stuff that's come up for you today as a result of today's show and um, or any other questions that you may have by if you want to book a session or whatever. Don't get too excited mm. or anything. Well, we'll try not to, Keisha. You know, I, how can I? I'm, you know, I really want to do my next week's show now. So how does it get any better than that? Let's so, uh, the radio station. Let's refuse to absolutely. go off. Absolutely. Let's, just let's refuse to go off. <laughs> I don't actually I don't think that's a choice we have. We've got about 15 seconds, I think, before the music kicks in. So um, I just want to thank everyone for coming in thank today you. and for all the questions from Domingo and Keisha and, and Bree and Christy and everyone else in our production team and my gorgeous co-host, Laura Thanks, Borland. Guys. So Bye -bye. I'll see you all next week. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. We hope you enjoyed playing with us today and that you'll come play with us next Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. 
Until then, what would it take for you to enjoy playing with choices and possibilities to create more fun, more